Ford Civic Arena. Washington leading 3-2. And guests on WDCA receive a beautiful Bull of the Watch courtesy of the Heck Company. Jeff River rejoining you here on Paramount 20 after 40 minutes of play. What a great second period from the Washington Capitals' perspective. And to share his thoughts on the second period with us is Capitals team captain Kevin Hatcher, who joins us downstairs. And Kevin, I thought after a solid first period, you guys came up in the second and I think took the, the play away from the hometown Penguins. Well, I think we did to a certain extent. I thought the first period we got rid of the butterflies pretty much. The second period we did a lot of the things that we wanted to, the things that we talked about before the game, getting the puck in deep, pursuing their defensemen, and trying to make them cough it up. I think we've been skating real, really well, and, and especially in the second period, we've been getting some good chances. And result, they took, we got a couple power plays. Uh, you know, I think it's real important that we continue to put the puck at the net and we continue to drive to the net on Barrasco. He's a, he's a good goaltender, and uh, no goaltenders like uh, people going to the net and getting in their face. We've been doing a good job of that tonight. So I think the second period, we've done a lot of the things that we talked about, and we're going to continue to do them in the third. Speaking of goaltending, how about the play tonight of Don Volpreck? Donnie Bopre, he's, uh, he's made some sensational saves for us. Uh, that's what we're looking for. Uh, I think no matter how well you play defensively against a team like Pittsburgh Penguins, they're going to they're gonna get a few quality opportunities, and we certainly need our goalies to come up big, and Donnie Bopre, he did an excellent job for us there. Kevin, we learned that you logged 11 minutes and 38 seconds of the 20 minutes of the first period, and I don't think you logged any less time in the second period, and that coupled with the injury to Sylvan Cote means that you and your defensive partner, Callie Johansson, are going to have to step it up even more. Do you like that additional ice time? Well, it's always, I've always liked a lot of ice time. Uh, you know, it's something I thrive on, but I, I think it's real important that you be careful. You keep your, sh your shifts real, real short out there. Otherwise, it can catch up to you late in, uh, late in the period. So... You know, I think we've done a real good job. We've, we've used all five defensemen we have left pretty much, but I think you're gonna, we're going to see a lot of ice time. And, you know, I think it's just uh, real important that we play a real solid third period. You know, Sean Simpson pointed out in that second period, and I know you as a guy that can certainly appreciate your defensive mate, uh, Kelly Johansson, he's had an outstanding game and a couple of close chances in on the net. He's come up with the puck and kept the Penguins away from Don Bopre. He certainly has. He's a... He's a player you sometimes might not recognize out there, but, but let me tell you, he, he certainly does all the, he makes the easy plays look easy, and he knows what he's doing out there. He's a veteran guy. He's, uh, you know, he, he certainly saved a couple goals. He cleared the puck out in front a couple times, and he's just a, he's the type of player, like I said, sometimes you don't recognize, but he means a real lot to the Washington Capitals. All right, what is Jim Schoenfeld telling the rest of your teammates here now as you guys protect a one-goal lead heading into the third period? Well, I, I would be thinking he's telling us right now that uh, to make sure our third period's our best period, we've, we've picked it up from the first, we got better in the second, let's go out there and get better in the third. Let's not give up very many quality opportunities, let's realize when Lemieux's, at, when Lemieux's on the ice, you got to watch out for him, he can hurt you. And, you know, I think most importantly that we play a, a real, solid hot, real solid third period and we play our game and not theirs. Kevin, in, in recent years, a lot's been expected of the Washington Capitals in the Stanley Cup playoffs, yet... Coming into this specific series, you and your teammates are under dodge. Can you make the best of that? Does that maybe, with less pressure, give you a better opportunity to go on? Well, I think there's still pressure on us to, to have good success in the playoffs. I think everybody wants a cup, but I tell you one thing, the 25 guys that we have, 25, 26 guys we have with us right now, we want the cup. I think, uh, you know, we are the underdogs. I thrive on being an underdog. I love it. So I think... Uh, you know, there's a little less pressure on us, but it's real important that, you know, we give it our best, and you can be sure we're going to do that. Well, Kevin, you've had an outstanding uh, play, uh, period, number two, and certainly a solid first period. You and your teammates, well-deserving of a one-goal lead. Keep it up. Thank you, Jeff. Kevin Hatcher, cap team captain, and obviously you can see the enthusiasm and, and certainly the emotion that Kevin Hatcher carries with him here after 40 minutes of play. Well-played hockey game from a Capitals perspective. They've got a one-goal lead. We'll be back. I'm Bob Peck, and for almost 50 years, I've been giving you the best Chevy deals in town. So before you pay more, check with Peck. Save even more with up to 1,000 cash back. Here's to you. I see it all out here. Whoa, check out the Ranger. Climbers get in trouble? Sometimes they need help. Hey, it can happen to anyone. Clean class. 
What if you could build a new kind of rock and roll radio station that was really different? What if you could take out the 50s doo-wop and bubblegum oldies and the meaningless chatter? And you could put in all the great rock and roll from the 60s and 70s. If you could build a radio station that was really different, you'd have the all-new Aero 94.7 FM. Try the new Aero 94.7 FM. Aero means all rock and roll oldies. thousands of mentally and physically disabled people who are homeless. If you work with a volunteer organization that helps the homeless, you should know about SSI, Supplemental Security Income. It means monthly cash payments, food stamps, and medical benefits. It means help for the homeless. more about SSI, contact Social Security. Back here at the Pittsburgh Civic Arena, 40 minutes to play, and the Capitals clinging to a one-goal lead. Exciting Stanley Cup playoff action here on Paramount 20. Jeff Rimmer, Sean Simpson rejoining you here at the Pittsburgh Civic Arena, and what a great period from the Capitals' perspective. Goaltender Don Beaupre right on up. Well, without a doubt, uh, everything they wanted to do on both ends, they did. Controlled the puck down low in the offensive zone. Donnie Beaupre continued to make the saves. Hey, and they slowed down the pace of the game, Jeff. Continued to get whistle after whistle, and I think that really disrupted the flow of the Pittsburgh offense. Washington Capitals down 2-1 after one period of play. Tied up the hockey game on a super... Super individual effort by Peter Bondra. Well, great job by Bondra. Driving off of the right side. He'll cut into the slot. And I'll tell you, Tommy Brassel thought he had the angle covered there, but somehow Bondra found the light on the short side and beat him. And that's what he's got to continue to do for the Capitals to do well. The goal, Bondra's first from Joe Juno, his first playoff point. 11.07, the time of the goal. And Washington had tied the score 2-2. A little over two minutes remaining or two minutes later, the Capitals come back and take the lead. Well, they always talk about the importance of offensive zone draws, and Mike Ridley not only wins this draw, but at the same time is able to get that go-ahead goal with a nice turnaround shot from the slot area. Getting a look at that goal here right now, the Capitals capitalizing from the slot. Good bounce goes off of the shin pads of Lemieux. Hatcher with that shot. Look at Ridley just turning and firing, and I'll tell you, that was Yarmo Jagger dropping down in the slot might have put a little bit of a screen on Barrasso because when that flew past him on the blocker side, he looked like he had no idea where that puck was coming from. The goal, Mike Ridley's first of the playoffs. Hatcher and Kelly Miller draw the assists. 13-29 the time of the goal, and the Capitals led 3-2 after 40 minutes of play. A look at the first intermission, or excuse me, second intermission stats. And uh, before, actually, before we get a look at the stats, we're going to look at a couple of big saves by Don Beaupre and a couple from point-blank range shots. Well, after that first period, Beaupre playing so well. Team goes in down 2-1. There's the first one. A save on Kevin Stevens. There's Johansson able to clear it. Cats clear the zone. And here's another one off of the rush. Watch Todd Nelson. He'll get this puck behind the net, shoot it off of Mullen. He'll go right off his knee into the slot. Look at Beaupre. Follow Francis across. There's nothing Ronnie Francis could do there. Beaupre patient stood up. Made another great save. The kick save and then the glove save. Don Beaupre very sharp, very effective in the Washington Nets. The intermission stats are brought to us here on Paramount 20 by Roy Rogers. Stop by Roy's today for a delicious breakfast at terrific new low prices. 3-2 Washington. 10 shots, 22 in total for the Capitals after 40 minutes. Six shots for Pittsburgh in the second. Two period total of 21. The Caps are 0 for 2 in the power play. The Penguins are 0 for 3. Both teams, five penalties, 10 minutes in total. We'll be back. Giant food out of town scoreboard. And we'll also have third period play. Stanley Cup playoff action from the Pittsburgh Civic Arena. I expect to get a lot out of my next new car. I expect it to come with features that I find important. 
expected to come with features that'll make my life easier. I expected to come at a price I'm willing to pay. Oh, did I mention I want this car today? See your local Chevy Geo dealers for your special value Corsica today. Formula Mobile One Synthetic Motor Oil. In a test, it protected an engine for 200,000 miles. The result? Vital engine parts that looked as young as the day they were born. There was virtually no engine wear. If you're looking for the fountain of youth, you'll find it in a container of motor oil. Mobile One Synthetic. It keeps your engine running like new. Dear foreign car owners, when it comes to fixing brakes, foreign cars aren't foreign to Midas. That's why we offer same-day brake service and guaranteed brake shoes and pads for as long as you own your car. Get 25% off guaranteed brake shoes and pads. That's 25% off brake shoes and pads for any car at the Midas International Brake Sale. cash more places worldwide than any other car, even American Express. Hey, Tim, fix everything. Visa Gold. This Capitals playoff game is sponsored in part by the American Express card. Don't leave home without it. Your National Capital Area Jeep and Eagle dealers, where you can expect the best. Roy Rogers, stop by Roy's today for a delicious piping hot breakfast, like our fresh baked biscuits, now at super low prices. Cup playoff hockey tonight from Pittsburgh. As we get set for the third period, the Washington Capitals three, the Pittsburgh Penguins two. Jeff Rimmer, Sean Simpson rejoining you here at the Civic Arena. And before the third period begins, a look at the Giants food out of town scoreboard. This afternoon, the New York Rangers, a shutout win over the New York Islanders, leading the way. Mark Messier with a goal and two helpers. Also this afternoon in Dallas, first ever Stanley Cup playoff action in the state of Texas and it was the Stars over St. Louis by a score of 5-3 Gilcrest with a pair of goals one other game tonight that game at the Meadowlands in New Jersey now in the third period Buffalo on a goal by Todd Simon assisted by Dale Howard Chuck at 1949 of the first Buffalo leading New Jersey one to nothing well Sean what do you think third period here Capitals have played textbook hockey, the kind of game, certainly leading with a goaltender on out. Don Beaupre's been sharp, but Jim Schottfeld has asked each and every player individually prior to the start of this series what he expects, starting with Don Beaupre, and he's got it for 40 minutes. Well, I'll tell you, I don't think the teams could have showed us uh, any better exactly what we want to happen. The first period, Capitals got skating. It was a little more of an open period transition game, and that period slowed it down. That's exactly, if you're a capital, that's what you want in this third period. Continue to get the whistle, slow the play down, and let's face it, the more time that they spend in the Pittsburgh zone rather than backing off, the better off they'll be. And the Capitals will start, hopefully, in that Pittsburgh zone for the third period. They have 35 seconds remaining in the Straka penalty, so they've got the power play and have Juno, Pavaka, and Peter Bondra, who's got a pair of points tonight, a goal and an assist. Slaney and Hatcher on the back line. Boy, you can really tell the emotion that Kevin Hatcher is bringing into this hockey game here tonight in that interview in the second period. Looking down at the Capitals bench area, Jeff, Sylvan Cote has not returned for this third period, so they're down to five defensemen, the two on the ice, and then, of course, Ricky along with Johansson and Slaney. And it is Slaney stepping in front of Don Beaupre. Five seconds left on the penalty. Left wing pass and play call. John Slaney logging a lot of ice time in that second period. Played very well. Joey Juno with a strong game. And I'll tell you what's impressed me through 40 minutes. It's not always 
been on the puck offensively, although he has an assist and has made some good plays, but anytime the Penguins, when he's been on the ice, have turned it back the other way, he tends to be that first forward getting back defensively. Good crowd here in Pittsburgh tonight. I don't know if it's a sellout. A number of seats were available prior to the start of the hockey game. And we again want to remind fans that we'll have game two for you here on Paramount 20, Tuesday night at 7.30. The team then returns home for games three and four, playoff games A and B, Thursday and Saturday. And operators are standing by at 301-386-7080. We want to see a good crowd in Washington. We want to see more Washington fans than Penguin followers. Hasn't always been the case in the Stanley Cup playoffs. But the Capitals playing excellent hockey here and looking to come home after, I think, enjoying the start of the series away from Washington because the Capitals have played well on the road this season. Now you look at their record on the road, ended up two games over 500 on the road, one at home, or I should say, so they played very well. Actually, three games, 22, 19, and one. And at the same time, you look at their last 10 road games of the regular season, Jeff, they finished off six, three, and one. And I think what's even more incredible is when you go down the stretch, two points on the road supposed to be harder to get, but the Capitals had no problem. Turnover, Kelly Miller with a shot, Barrasso the save, rebound. Skated away by Larry Murphy. Lemieux looks cross ice, stepping up in the play here is Pocket at center. Pocket throws it into the offensive zone, off the glass, played near side. Johansson can't get his stick on it. In the corner, it's Rick Pocket. Out there with Stevens and Lemieux. Lemieux fetched off in front by Poulin. Oh, that long reach tried to throw it behind Beaupre. And again, I think Beaupre got some help from the goalpost. Look at that long reach by Lemieux, fencing there with Poulin. And Don Beaupre tested early again. Oh, what a great save by Beaupre. And you said it, Jeff, the reach. The only thing the Capitals could have done there was have two men on him. Poulin had the position. Lemieux just reached over him. Samuelson at center. Tries to shovel it ahead. Denied by Jones. Samuelson knocks down that pass. Steps up at center. On the backhand. Comes off his skate. Carried in over the line by Doug Brown. Brown going wide. Throws it in front. Nobody in the slot there. And it's played off the boards for Mike Ridley. Ridley able to clear the zone. Samuelson all over him. Like an octopus, I might add. Throw it on the right wing for Jones. He can't get his stick on it. Samuelson behind Barrasso with some help. Throws it ahead on the left wing. Here comes Sandstrom. Works on Slaney. The young Capitals defenseman makes the play and then clears the zone, and he didn't miss Randy Burridge by much. Burridge would have been in home free. Slaney again with a pass to Ridley, and play is whistled out. We'll step aside. Exciting Stanley Cup playoff action from Pittsburgh. Washington 3, the Penguins 2. excitement of racing without actually going to the track you could try winner circle with six chances to win it could make a winner out of well almost anyone <laughs> have you seen the slut mar trip to san francisco that's us at the golden gate bridge nice picture <laughs> oh, oh the trolley for a real taste of San Francisco, try Roy Rogers' Frisco Bacon Cheeseburger or Frisco Grilled Chicken Sandwich on toasted sourdough bread. Add fries and a drink for just 99 cents more. Your mother had fish oh, before. Oh, it's terrible in that picture. Roy Rogers, a good deal better. Elvis has left the building. Got a look at that last scoring opportunity by Mario Lemieux. Look at Poulin doing a good job in front of the net. Not allowed to grab a hold of the stick, and there's that reach. Two good shots on Donnie Beaupre. First one, he makes a right bad save. Second one goes in behind him and back out the other side. Kelly Johansson. Excellent game by the Caps rear guard, and he rolls it into the offensive zone. Larry Murphy playing it ahead. Now this is Francis at center. Francis for Yager. Yager steps in across the line, throws it on the right wing. Connor Walchuk back to play and pulled off Francis. Off on the far side, Johansson is buffed by Bullock. Centering pass in the slot, carried away by Juno. Here comes Juno, away at center. With a burst of speed across the line, deals it a hit to Bobotka. The backhand shot sails over top of the net. Ricky's drive goes sailing wide. Taglianetti tying up Pavaka. Michael Pavaka tried to dig free with some help from Kanawalcha. Over the 
This is Larry Murphy. Murphy off the boards for Yager, away from Ricky. Neutralized play now. Johansson had some help from Ricky, and it's right back into the Pittsburgh zone. 16.52 left. Third period in regulation time. Washington with a one-goal lead as Hatcher sends it ahead for Hunter. Hatcher again will find Slaney. Slaney stepping up in the play. Dumping it in, then retreating to the line. Ulf Samuelson rolls it around for Rick Tockett on the right wing. Tockett away at center. Here's Tockett sending it in wide of Don Beaupre. Cut off left wing by Kevin Stevens. Out there with Lemieux and Tockett. Played at the point by Shell Samuelson. Beaupre out of the net. Leaves it there for Hunter. Off the glass and the pass for Bondra didn't miss by much. Ulf Samuelson for Stevens. Sweeps it into the zone. Slaney. Pass for Kristich on the left wing. Kristich away at center. With Bondra and Hunter. The three cross the line. The pass for Hunter on the right wing. The shot blocked by Ramsey. With some help, Bondra tried to throw it in front. Hustling after it here is Kristich. Away from Stevens. Bondra tied up by Greg Brown. And Ramsey for Buffalo. Or rather, the former Buffalo Sabre makes the play out of the zone. Ricky throws it back in. Throws a punch at Greg Brown. No penalty go. Ramsey, the ex-Sabre again. The length of the ice, this one. An icing call in the Penguin fans getting all over the home team here. And here's how the Capitals can take the crowd out of the hockey game. You know, a quick look at the bench area. Just a quick point on Craig Berube from the regular season last game in Buffalo, Jeff. I won't see a lot of ice time in the third period. If you were following the box scores, got a 10-minute misconduct at the end of the last hockey game. That got him over 300 minutes in penalties. How that situation happened was really nothing at the end of the game. He skated by Kerry Fraser in the second period of the Buffalo game. Asked him at the end of the game to give him a 10-minute misconduct if nothing was going on. Sure enough, at the end of the game, Barube getting on the bus after that game didn't even know. Kerry Fraser gave him the 10 minutes, and he gets ends up with 305 penalty minutes and a great season for the Capitals in his first year. Face-off to the left of Barrasso. Interestingly enough, the Capitals have won 34 face-offs to Pittsburgh's 21, and a key draw here in the Pittsburgh zone. 15-33 left to go. Ridley, Burridge, and Kelly Miller up front. Johansson and Ricky paired on the back line as... Coach Schottville down to five defensemen. Alternating Johansson and Hatcher with a great deal of regularity. Cote again injured in the second period, experiencing some dizziness. And we don't know if he will or will not return tonight. Neutralized play. Jones finds Randy Burry. Across the line and it's called. You look at a situation like that, Jeff, with the defenseman, all of a sudden John Slaney, much like a young goaltender, when you're not expected to play, or for a defenseman not to play a lot, probably didn't have the nerves coming into the hockey game, all of a sudden Cote's out, he's been thrown into the top four, and uh, I'll tell you, has played very, very well, has John Slaney. Fifteen twenty left to go, third period. Penguins winning each of the last two playoff series from Washington and with those two series wins went on to win Stanley Cups in 1991 and 92. And for them, move down the playoff trail this time they've got to get by a Capitals hockey club that feels poised and ready for the challenge with Pittsburgh. Larry Murphy steps in front of Tom Barrasso deals it on the right wing. This is Taglianetti. The pass for Sandstrom. Winds up. Good save by Don Beaupre. And he'll hold on the quick whistle. And we'll have a face-off in the Washington zone. 14.49 remaining. You can't use a mobile phone to tell your boss you're running late. It's at 2.45, right? To tell your client you're stuck in traffic. Look, you know, where is he? Or tell your wife your car's broken down. Temperature dropping rapidly towards this evening. The showers and... Unless... Hello? The call goes through. A mobile phone is only as good as the system it's on. Choose Bell Atlantic Mobile. Frequent flyers on most airlines are thousands of miles from a free trip. But on Southwest Airlines, our company club frequent flyer members are only eight short round trips away. Southwest Airlines Company Club. The shortest route to free trips. 
Southwest Airlines has so many flights, hey, if you miss again. one, you can always catch the next one. Uh, hey, don't go change or the next one. Hello? Or the next one. Southwest Airlines. It's just plain smart. Page from Capitals history book, pertinent to today's game. Three years ago today, the Capitals defeated the Penguins 4-2. Right here at the Civic Arena, Donnie Beaupre was in goal, had 24 saves, and that gave the Capitals a one-game-to-none lead in the second-round series. Don't forget, three years ago, they only played 80 regular season games. First round of the playoffs started two weeks early. That's why we're only in game one of round one this year. From the face-off, Samuelson saves at the line, goes off Yager's skate. Capitals have it, it's Dale Hutter. He finds Dave Poulin with Kelly Miller. The pass to Kelly Miller, back to Poulin. And Barrasso gets a pat on it. Great move and the give and go with the Capitals up front. Yager squeezed out along the board. Johansson tying up the Pittsburgh forward. Squirts free and played by Slaney to the line, but not up. Mullen in the corner. Francis tied up as is Yager. A tower of strength on the back line tonight, ladies and gentlemen. The efforts of Kelly Johansson, and what a job, and a much bigger Yager here. Yager now spins out of the corner. Yager tied up, they're gonna get a penalty call. Here's a shot, saved by Beaupre, rebound, touched by the Capitals, and it's gonna be a holding the stick penalty against Kelly Johansson. Uh, Kelly Johansson doing everything he could against Yarmor Yager, and there you see the speed and the size of Yager. Shielding off Johansson, walking out of the corner. Callie exhausted at the end of a long shift. Had the hold of the left arm of Yager as he came to the middle of the slot area. And the Penguins will go on to their fourth power play. There he is working out of the corner. A little position, that's all it takes. There's Johansson grabbing a hold of the arm. Yager still able to turn off of that, though. And look at this nice shot he gets away. Nice calm save by Donnie Beaupre. Whistle blowing right after. So the Penguins, who were able to convert during the regular season series on a total of seven of 21 power play opportunities, have not, I repeat, not scored a power play goal here. And now with the extra man and the faceoff of the Washington zone. Usually Lemieux does not take the offensive zone faceoff, Jeff, but Francis at the end of a line shift would normally do that, then slide back to the left point. He's on the bench. Greg Hodgood's at the left point, and Lemieux will face off against Hunter to the Caps' advantage. Nine power play shots by Pittsburgh coming into this extra man opportunity. Hunter able to take it away from Murphy and keep it away from Lemieux. All right there, a good job by Dale Hunter. Pressuring Mario Lemieux along the board. Steals that puck, and I'm sure he'd like to have it back with Dale Hunter. Flipped it out of the zone, but because he put it into the penalty box area, faceoff will come back in to the capital zone. So face of concern from Eddie Johnson. And there is Dale Hunter set for the draw, and he wins another one. Oh, is Dale Hunter hot on faceoff? I tell you, with Lemieux on the power play, once they're in that offensive zone, Jeff, you've got to pressure him. You can't let him sit around. Sooner or later, someone's going to come open or he's going to get a scoring chance himself. Rick Tockett carries in across the line, hit by Ricky. Along the boards, Lemieux lets it go to the point. Murphy cross ice for Francis, dumps it behind the net. Ricky can't get a stick on it. Lemieux's pass goes to Hatcher, carries off ice. Hatcher now from center. Crosses the line and just rolls it to the wall. 113 left of the power play. The Penguins up ice. They've got the extra man as Murphy dumps. Ricky away from Stevens. Shot by Hatcher. Right wing by Kelly Miller and played right off. 1254 left to go. 55 seconds in the penalty to Johansson as Stevens crosses the line. Steals for Lemieux, Ridley. Keeping it away from big number 66 and forcing the face off as he slides into the boards and covers up the puck. I'll tell you, that'll give Riki and Kevin Hatcher a well-needed rest. They've been on for the full minute and 12 seconds killing off of this penalty. Jim Seanville wanting to keep the two veterans out there in a smart play by Ridley. Had lost his balance, had that puck along the boards. You see Lemieux directing traffic. Moving up. 
Not a whole lot going on. But a good job by Ridley. Once he had left his feet, Jeff, holding on to the puck. And uh, when you're down a man, the referee's not going to call you for a delay again too many times. Big number 66, Mario Lemieux, who has one of the two Pittsburgh goals. In fact, in the first period, Lemieux tied it up after the Capitals had taken a 1-0 lead on a goal by Dimitri Christian. And tonight, Christian, Bondra, and Ridley have scored. Three players that must figure in the offense. Shot by Brown, sails high and wide. Lemieux can't get a stick on it. Kept in by Hoggood. Ricky keeping it away from the Penguins in front of Beaupre. And then the zone is clear. Dale Hunter doing a good job to tie up Yager and throws it deep into the zone. 30 seconds left of the Johansson penalty. Behind the net, Brown deals it on the wing for Yager in full flight. Yager across the line, walks by Riki, walks in front, Beaupre to save, and he covers up on the rebound, sliding the glove out after the pad save. No further play, and a key face-off in the Washington zone. What a great effort by Don Beaupre. And what a great play right there by Yager. Hatcher and Riki tired. They've been on now a minute and 41 seconds. There's the move. Riki trying to stand up at the blue line. Yager moves in, shields off Hatcher, but look at Beaupre again. It's the confidence, Jeff. You can see it in Donnie's game. Not going down early. Yager walking across the slot as he loves to do when he's in tight. But there's Donnie Beaupre following him across. And when you have a defenseman right behind you putting on pressure as a forward, you have nowhere else to go. And he's forced to stuff it into the pads of Beaupre. Think back to the late season, Sean, and remember the problems that were plaguing Don Beaupre. He was playing very well. But then with the lack of activity, the lack of shots was losing concentration. That's something that can't happen here tonight based on his work. And he's certainly being proved correct. He's getting the work and he's staying sharp. Well, he's looked great, no doubt about it. And I'm sure down the stretch he'll tell you that fatigue played a big factor. Mentally. Yeah, and physically for so long when Tabaracci was injured. And both Defoe and Kolzig, uh, and Sean told not wanting to use him. Samuelson shot sails wide of the net. Played off the boards by Poulin. Kept in by Murphy. Beaupre out to play it over a stick. The net is empty, but the Capitals are able to clear. The shot sent to the point, and Beaupre almost caught out of his own net there. Caps have killed off the penalty, and Slaney dumps in. Larry Murphy for Pittsburgh. Slides it across for Samuelson. This is Mullen at center. Mullen across the line, leaves it there for Yager. Yager fires it, that's blocked by Slaney, and he too has had a solid game on the back line for Washington. Played off the glass, unable to keep it in as Samuelson, Shell Samuelson, paired on the point with Ulf, and the turnover finds Bondra away in the left wing, Bondra shot, and Barrasso got a piece of it. Mullen, knocked to the ice, Bondra the wraparound, big save there. By Tom Barrasso, got the pad on it, then covered up with the glove. Peter Bondra, an opportunist, and I like the way Peter Bondra is playing tonight. Now, Capitals earlier in the period, Penguins thinking offense. Dave Poulin on a two-on-one had a good shot on goal, and again this time, the Penguin forwards leaving their zone early. Bondra with the steal in the neutral zone. Moved off, got an initial shot. Barrasso with a blocker save. Then with continuing pressure, walked out of the corner and tried to slide a backhander short side. Good save by Barrasso once again. Steve Conowalchuk was open. Here he is, that good speed, coming around. There's Barrasso, and look at that. Two capitals right there. Conowalchuk and then Juno coming into the slot looking for a rebound. Tom Barrasso. In the Pittsburgh Nets, and we'll have the faceoff to his right. Mike Ridley. Out there now with Burridge and Keith Jones. Ricky and Johansson paired on the back line. Ridley wins the draw. Ricky steps up to the circle and fires it wide. Johansson pinching in, rolls it behind the net. Andy Burridge bumps Brown behind. Cross check by Ramsey. Loose puck played along the boards by Mike Ridley. Ridley finds Jones on the right wing. Bank back into the corner for Burridge. Burridge out of the corner. Andy Burridge firing it wide on the stick side. Ricky in off the point. Throws it behind the net. Ridley after it. This is Ramsey, right to Randy Burridge. Burridge to Jones, and the blocker pad saved by Barrasso. Along the wall, Burridge doubles it to the corner to Mike Ridley. Ridley pinned along the board, plays called, and that's off the marsh pegs. We'll have a face-off in the Pittsburgh zone. 10.41 left to go. Third period in regulation time. Capitals with their best sustained pressure of this third period, working that puck down low. Good job by Burridge, along with Jones and Ridley. Replaying... 
down low, a couple of shots on Barrasso, and I'll tell you, this is important at this time in the hockey game, Jeff, because even when the Pittsburgh Penguins set up in the capital zone and move the puck around, if there are not shots on a goaltender, just the fact that Donnie Beaupre has to shuffle around, continue to visualize on the puck, mentally and physically, you get tired a little bit. So Capital puts some pressure in the Penguin zone, gives him a little bit of a break, and the time to get ready for this last 10 minutes. Dale Hunter, who has won the majority of the faceoffs that he's taken tonight. Well, I think it's such an advantage to the Capitals anytime they can have Hunter up there against Lemieux on the draws. Actually, Lemieux wins this faceoff. Right wing for Tockett, who backhands between the Caps' backliners, and Hatcher will come back to play after he takes it from Don Beaupre. And he lets it go to Christens. Looks cross ice for Kelly Miller. Too far. Taglianetti finds Larry Murphy near side. Murphy comes back into the Washington end. This is Hatcher. Slaney. Off the boards for Kelly Miller. Can't trap it. Taglianetti. Touch pass there. And it's backhanded the rest of the way by Kevin Stevens. Rick Tockett from the right wing to the slot. Tipped away by Hatcher. Caps clear the zone. We've now approached and passed the halfway point of this third period. 9.56 left to go. The Capitals leading 3-2. Pass for Rick Tockett. Played by Slaney. The Capitals send it in. Connor Walchuk. Away from Taglianetti. Connor Walchuk looks in front. Juno off the point. Can't get anywhere. Joey Juno. Larry Murphy. Bounces one into the Washington end. Johansson. Or Juno. With Pavaka and Connor Walchuk. Here comes Juno to the net. Juno walks in. Shoots. Scores! Joey Juno and the Caps lead by two. What a goal. What an effort. And Washington leading for the first time in the hockey game by a pair of goals. All right, that could not come at any better time for the Washington Capitals. Joey Juno, that's what they have him here for. Has had a strong game both defensively and right there offensively. Watch the Pittsburgh defenseman as Juno moves through the neutral zone. Trip right there. Juno moves in, and what a great fake right there. Puts the backhander past Tommy Barrasso, and oh, a two-goal lead with 9.26 left. That's a big one. Look at this move by Juno, though. Let's Barrasso make the first move, goes down, and just puts it around and makes it look easy. Juno's first goal, second point. Here comes Washington again. Barrasso shovels it ahead. Yager for Mullen. Mullen at center. Deals for Yager. France was held up by Mike Ridley and play called on the offside. 9-11 left to go. Joey Junot with a goal and an assist and the Capitals lead by two. I tell you, that's what Joey Juno brings to this Washington Capital Hockey Club that they have not had in past playoffs. They've played a strong defensive game, but when their team is only up by a goal instead of having people to plug along the board, they add a guy that has some skill when that key scoring chance comes, that's the third one of the period, one by Poole and one by Bondra, and finally by Juno, he connects. Unassisted for Juno at 10.34. The even strength goal, all goals tonight, by the way, have been scored at even strength. And the crowd very suddenly has become awfully quiet here in Pittsburgh. Mullen shot denied by Beaupre. Swept to the wall, and Randy Burridge carries out of the zone. Burridge down the left wing at center. Rolls it into the Pittsburgh zone. Barrasso will play off the glass. Knocked down by Ridley. Ridley from the wing. Sent wide as it was deflected. Pavanka can't get a stick on it. Mullen looks cross ice. This is Sandstrom on Slaney. And the young Capitals defenseman makes the play with Hatcher jumping up. Kevin Hatcher throws it behind the net. Excellent work here by the Capitals and a well-deserved two-goal lead. Michael Pavanka denied. In the corner. Banked off the board. Slaney on the turnover. Here comes Pittsburgh. McKechnie pulls up on the right wing. Held off by Slaney. Joey Juno for Hatcher. Hatcher jumping up. Hatcher at center. Wings crosses the line. Winds up for Russell. The pad chain. Hagley and Eddie. On the right wing. Juno is hit by Straka. Connor Walchuk looks for Junot. Larry Murphy on the turnover. Junot had it poked off his stick by Tom Barrasso and it's struck on the win. Looks cross ice. Here come the Penguins. Taglianetti. McKechnie back to Taglianetti and he is hit by Ricky Sick to the boards and play is whistled out. 737 left. Capitals by two. 
Man is a social animal. Man is made to live with others. So, the club is a whole series of human adventures, working toward a better way of living. We all like what is beautiful. We all love what is true. I've become completely attached to the American Express card. It gives you freedom, and heaven knows what that's worth at the present time. American Express is welcome to Club Med, and anywhere else people go to find themselves. Amtrak meets you more than halfway with the extension of our fantastic 55% off fares. Purchase your tickets by April 29th. Good for travel now through June 16th. Call your travel agent or 1-800-USA-RAIL. Jeff Rivers, John Simpson rejoining you from Pittsburgh. And look at Dale Hunter on his last shift against Mary Lemieux, doing a good job keeping the body between the Capitals' goal and the big number 66. <laughs> Lemieux, uh, a little upset with people hanging on to him, but how about him hanging on to Hunter? No, exactly, and it's funny, as they both went to the bench, Lemieux goes to his door, and as soon as Hunter sees he goes off the ice, he goes to the Capitals' bench. Kelly Miller had a roll off his stick. This is Samuelson. Samuelson playing it ahead. Lemieux turned around by Hunter. Steven steps into the Capitals number 32. And you can certainly tell that Dale Hunter's a target. And the Penguins are frustrated by number 32 of the Capitals tonight. And with good reason, he's had a whale of a game. Well, the Capitals with that two-goal lead showing the confidence, not backing off. They're continuing to pressure the Penguins at their own blue line. And Really, the Penguins have not been able to get anything going. And you know what will happen next, Jeff? The defensemen will start jumping into the rush, trying to create something offensively. And if the Cavs continue to stop, and you know there are going to be some more odd man chances back the other way against Tommy Barrasso. Another home team having difficulty with the visitors tonight. The only other game being played. Another Eastern Conference matchup. New Jersey trailing Buffalo 2-0. Simon and Mogilny have scored for the Sabres. Look who has a pair of assists, Dale Howarchuk. And that is a final score. New Jersey loses to Buffalo 2-0. Kristen able to clear it out of the zone, held up by Samuelson. Shell Samuelson with that long reach. Able to shovel it ahead, only to see the Capitals gain or regain the offensive zone. Now, Beaupre, as he went out to play that last puck, Stevens got in his way, was interfering with Beaupre trying to get back into the net. Had they turned, as we now get Kristich and Samuelson pushing and shoving and whistle, but had they turned and went for a, a shot on goal, it would have been interesting to see if Marowelli would give Stevens an interference penalty. Samuelson and Kristich, both now helmetless. Right at Samuelson, he's all arms and legs. Well, he's a big guy, and I'll tell you, 35 years old, has been a nice acquisition coming across with Rick Tockett and Kenny Reggett from the Philadelphia Flyers. And has given them some good stability on their blue line, playing with his countrymen and namesake, Paul oh, Samuelson. A big trade for Mark Recchi. 6.45 left to go, regulation time here in Pittsburgh. The Capitals with a two-goal lead. And Samuelson and Krieger have both been given the gate. Coincidental minor penalties. Jeff, playoff tickets again are available now for Thursday and Saturday night's games against the Penguins. So come out and root for the Capitals on to victory. For playoff tickets, call the Capitals office now at 301-386-7080. And I'm sure anyone sitting at home watching this game so far has to appreciate the effort the Capitals have been giving. So give the office a call. And that's games A and B, Thursday, April 21st, Saturday, April 23rd. Start time for both of them is 7.30. So be there at the U.S. Air Arena. 13-15, the time of the coincidental minor penalties. Roughing to both Kristich and Samuelson. So it's four skaters on four. This gives the Penguins a little more open ice. And they've got Yager and Lemieux up front with Murphy and Brown. This is Yager around the net, throws to the slot. Murphy shot deflected off Poulin, but wide. Opre looking the other way as the puck sailed wide after it was deflected by Dave Poulin. 
Brown with a low shot. Traffic in front of Beaupre again. Missing the net. Johansson is it along the far boards for Hunter. Off the boards, but not out. Right back to Hunter again. This time banks it off the wall, and it goes the rest of the way. No doubt on the four-on-four four, what mode the two teams are in. You got Jaeger and Lemieux up front. Jim Chantel counting with the defense of Poulin and Hunter. And here comes Mullen and Francis. The two cross the line and denied by Slaney. Here's Kelly Miller. One on two. Miller waiting for Ridley. Pulls up. Leaves it for Ridley from a sharp angle. Sails wide. At the point, Riki jumps ahead. Along the board, played by Mike Ridley. Bounces. And the zone is clear. Riki jumps back in. For Rasso leaving for Larry Murphy. Five and a half minutes left to go, regulation time. Cap lead by two as Mullen sails down the right wing. Winds up, the blocker pad save, rebound. Francis fans, and then he was held off by Slaney. Back the other way, it's Washington's turn. Delayed penalty as Connor Waltrick comes up ice. Away from a hit from Tag Leonetti, and a capital power play when we return. 5.15 remaining, Washington by two. Budweiser presents Evander Holyfield, heavyweight champion versus Michael Moore, the number one contender. Live from Caesars Palace, only on pay-per-view. Call your local cable operator to order. Find a television and take shelter. Jeff Rimmer, Sean Simpson rejoining you here in Pittsburgh on Paramount 20. Shots on goal, pretty even to this point. 29 for the Capitals, and here comes the 28th shot on goal by Joey Mullen. Faking. There's the drive. Smart play by Riki right there. Mullen in his windup, backed off, made sure the goal break could see it. And here's the penalty. Slaney did a great job. That shot that Mullen took, the rebound went off to the left. Francis was charging in for it. Slaney got over, touched it to the boards. And that's where he, the infraction occurred. Francis hauling down Pavanka. Taps on the power play. Evan Hatcher takes the shot, deals to Slaney. Down low, Juno. Camped on the edge of the crease is Pavanka. As you know, to the net. Away from Samuelson. Dumps to Pavanka behind. Pavanka. Held off by Larry Murphy. You know, behind the red line as well to help up. But comes to Hatcher, left point. He deals to Slaney. Right circle. Wrist shot by Slaney. Sails wide. Hatcher play. Samuelson. And Kristichow. Now, Capitals at full strength. Penguins down a man. A minute 20 left of the penalty. Christich to the net. Knocking down was Brown. Christich, cross ice. Brown again blocking the shot and the Penguins clear. A minute 10 left in the penalty to Francis as Christich meets it over the line to the left side. He is hammered by Caglianetti. Then gets an elbow as the two get back on their feet. You know, Johansson, actor you know, on the half board on the far side. You know, looks. Down low, Pavanka looks in front to Juno. Christian in the high slot. Now trying to bend his way in front of Barrasso. Pavanka walks out of the corner. The pass to Hatcher. Sails over top of the net of the stick side. In front again, Juno. Denied by Barrasso, the backhander. And the zone is clear. Christian is held off by two Penguins. And Pavanka coming in to help his winger as the Caps now change on the fly. 25 seconds left of the power play. Washington four. Penguins 2, 3.35 left to go, third period. Slaney steps in front of Don Beaupre. This is Johansson throwing it ahead, and Jones slaps it into the zone. Andy Burridge tries to come up with a puck. He and Ridley. Here comes Burridge. Burridge in front, looks to the point. Freaky shot deflected wide of Barrasso. 3.11 left in the period. The teams are at full strength. 
Pittsburgh up ice. Larry Murphy feeds to McEachern. Denied by Ricky with a pass to Mike Ridley. Ridley and Brown, the only players back. And now Brown feeds ahead here for Murphy. 258 left. On the left wing for Stevens. Chopped out of the zone by Mike Ridley. And then he heads to the bench. The capital shift will be short here in the final two minutes and 50 seconds. Up ice Ramsey. Ramsey across the line. Away from Connor Walchuk. Hatcher will play for the Capitals. Hatcher deals it off the board for Poulin. Caps try to clear, unable to do so before skated out by Dale Hunter. Delayed offside and play whistled out. Hunter Cap bringing it out. Penguins back in. Capitals continue to control and on that power play, Jeff, Joey Juno with that good puck control, working the puck along the right boards, not trying to force any plays. Your team's up by two goals. You're in the last five minutes of the hockey game. Don't force anything. The worst you're doing is taking time off of the clock when the Penguins need to badly a goal very quickly to get back in this hockey game. 2.36 left in the third. Well, we've just received word from Washington with his exciting performance tonight, folks, from the Capitals' perspective. We understand that uh, the operators back in Washington are very, very busy in taking your request for tickets for playoff games A and B on Thursday and Saturday. Be patient, folks. You can call the operators back in Washington at 301-386-7080. And well after this hockey game, for as long as you need them, the operators will be there to take your ticket requests for playoff games A and B on Thursday and Saturday night. So be patient. The operators standing by are awfully busy right now, and you can understand why for this terrific team performance tonight from the Washington Capitals over the favorite Penguins. Yager. From the circle, knocked down by Straka. Hunter gets a stick on it, banks it off the boards. Here's Straka. The Penguins looking for a penalty call, as are the fans here at the Civic Arena, and they let Marawelli know. Well, Straka right there had a hold of Dave Poole and Stick as they walked out to the right circle, went flying to the ground. I don't know if he's expecting a call on the Capitals, but very important. Two minutes and ten seconds left for the Capitals continue to move the legs, especially in their own zone. Don't give Marowelli any reason to put the Penguins back on the power play. Faceoff will come in neutral lights. Hockey to David Poyle in that second intermission, rightfully. Cap general manager pointing out all the pre-series predictions of a one-sided series favoring Pittsburgh. And I said it Thursday night, Sean, you and I discussed it at great length. I think the Capitals have less pressure on them and are in a better situation being an underdog. In fact, the guy that's got the puck there, Kevin Hatcher, said much the same in our second intermission. Well, they've done everything they needed to do. They've killed off the power play for the Penguins, and they've gotten the great goaltending from both breaks. The zone is cleared by Christian. No question, the Penguins have outstanding talent individually. The Capitals have played as a team down the stretch and are looking at an excellent effort and another big save by Beaupre there. Would you agree with me? Beaupre first star of the hockey game tonight? Without a doubt. Tockett, Murphy in front, sails high and wide of Don Beaupre. Dimitri Kristich and Tockett looking to draw a penalty, but the Caps come up by three on one. Hatcher, Kristich, Kata Walchuk. Kata Walchuk, Hatcher. And he had the side of the net open, but fan on his shot. Back up ice come the Penguins. Hatcher's left one of his gloves in the Pittsburgh zone. A minute, eight seconds left to go. Murphy turned around on the play. Hatcher clears. Touched up by the Penguins, and with 102, it's called on the offside. Riki and Tockett now, and there's no question the Penguins have been taken out of their game, and they're showing their frustration. Yeah, we're going to get a penalty right here to Rick Tockett. And rightfully so. He was upset because Chris, as he was going for a loose puck, turned to put a hook on Tockett on that last sequence of plays in the cap zone. Caught him right in the stomach area. Dropped to the ground. Chris, Connor Walter Hatcher moved out on that three-on-one, Jeff. I think they were in a state of shock. <laughs> Couldn't believe they had a three-on-one. That play went about as slow up the ice as you possibly could have. Connor Walchuk delayed. They actually had three men... To only one penguin, Tom Barrasso, put it over to Hatcher, misses the net. Boy, uh, that play developed slowly, and there weren't too many penguins hustling back to the aid of their goaltender. As Rick Tockett will get two minutes, and he'll head to the dressing room. Now well, let's just about put the icing on the OK. Tockett gets the date. 1858. Two minutes for roughing and a 10-minute misconduct. 
to Rick Tockett, the Pittsburgh Penguins. And I'll tell you, we set up the game coming up against the Capitals and the Penguins Tuesday night, Jeff. You win the first game on the road, all of a sudden you have home ice advantage if you're the Capitals. That puts pressure on the Penguins to come out Tuesday night. Capitals can play a little looser. You come in, you've uh, gotten your main objective, you've gotten the win, and uh, that's going to play in their favor Tuesday night. Goes right back to what we said in the very early minutes of the hockey game. The pressure on the Penguins are now doubly so with the Capitals' performance here tonight. I'll tell you, there's so many Capitals you can pick as stars. You got Donnie Beaupre, anybody on the defense that stepped up and played so well with Slaney, Cote out. Hatcher, oh, I think Ricky's played outstanding as well, Jeff. And you pointed out the other three. Joey Juno has had a great game. You look on the defensive Peter side, the Byron. job. Oh, the job that Dale Hunter has done against Mary Lemieux. But uh, I really appreciate the way a guy like John Slaney has picked up his game. One on one has looked just so solid. And he's logged an awful lot of ice time in this hockey game. Before the Capitals even took the ice for a morning skate, you saw Jim Schoenfeld. He held a team meeting individually, if you can believe it, telling every player what was expected of them tonight and for the series in front of each and every member of the team. And boy, has it paid off in spades tonight for the Capitals. Across the line, moving in, was Yager. And skating away from in front of the net was Johansson. We're going to get a penalty here. It's going to be on Kevin Hatcher, a hooking penalty. Hatcher and Johansson. Yager trying to squeeze between them on the rush. That's all right right there. It'll be four on four hockey. And you can hear the booing of the fans, upset that with 49 seconds left, a fact of too little, too late. So that's that speed of Yarmo Yager, who went around Joe Ricci earlier in the period. Volpre had to make a great save. And again, this time, Working one on two, there's a quick move on Hatcher. Both Hatcher and Miller working on Yager. Forty-nine seconds left to go. Barrasso, in fact, now has left the Pittsburgh net. So the Penguins will play with five skaters here. Another thing that works to the advantage, Jeff, but during the regular season, you have a lot of back-to-back -back games. You have a busy schedule. But the amount of ice time that the four capital defensemen have logged, guys like Dale Hunter, Donnie Beaupre with a great game, you have the luxury of a day off tomorrow, rest, then you play the following day. You know your schedule all the time. You're not playing the back-to-back -back games where you play one place, travel to another, play a little bit tired. Caps will be fresh again Tuesday. And as you point out, game two Tuesday night, folks will have it for you exclusively on Paramount 20. You're gonna get 7.30, the one-timer in the goal by Mario Lemieux. Power play goal, his second of the hockey game. First power play goal of the night. And hold on to your hats, folks. It's a one-goal hockey game. I say power play goal. They had the extra attacker with Barrasso out of the net. It was actually even strength as far as penalty time with each team having a man off. But the Penguins had the extra skater. Uh, right off of the draw, and I'll tell you, it's going to make it interesting last 44 seconds. Barrasso back into the goal. It'll be four on four, so the key here, of course, for the Caps is going to be to win the draw, get it into the Penguin zone so they cannot take the goaltender out. But right there, Lemieux all alone, take the perfect feed from Murphy, and there's nothing Donnie Beaupre could do right there. Lemieux second of the playoffs. I bet there'll be some people here in Pittsburgh scrambling to come back in as the Penguins have now called a timeout. Eddie Johnson diagramming what he wants his four men to do off of the draw should they win it or lose it. Sure, if they win it, Tommy Barras will be on his way to the bench and they'll get that fifth attacker on. 44 seconds left to go, third period, and regulation time. In Schoenfeld, Keith Lane, Doug Shearer behind the Capitals players who played an outstanding hockey game here tonight against a very talented Pittsburgh hockey team. And the fans, and there are few remaining, are on their feet for what will be the final 44 seconds of regulation time. Francis kicks it ahead to Lemieux, held off by Kelly Miller, who feeds Michael Pavaka. Pavaka darts in, Pavaka shoots, scores! 
Michael Pavanka, and the Capitals have regained a two-goal lead. That will ice it with 34 seconds left to go. I thought we were going to have to start backtracking, Jeff, on all of our talk about Tuesday night and the Capitals getting a victory. But right there, again, standing up at their own blue line, it was Kelly Miller off of the draw. Penguins kick it forward. Watch as the play comes over to the right. Look at Kelly Miller working on Lemieux, kicks it up. And there's Pavanka moving in, and he'll beat Barrasso to the glove side with a good quick snapshot. And uh, I'll tell you, I'm breathing a little easier. Well, Michael Pavanka, two goals, 10 assists in his last 14 regular season games. First goal of the playoffs, Kelly Miller draws the assist, and the Capitals come storming back just 10 seconds after the Penguins have got the second goal from Mario Lemieux. Pavanka right now has the goal unassisted, but no question, an assist should be given to Kelly Miller. Barrasso heading to the bench with 34 seconds left, down by two goals. No sense waiting to see if you win the draw. Might as well put that fifth attacker out. That's exactly what they're going to do as Larry Murphy hops back out onto the ice. Yager, the other pointman. Francis and Pavanka set for the draw. The faceoff picked up by Brown, backhanded by Ricky, but before Larry Murphy sends it right back in. Johansson high off the glass, knocked down, and Pavanka skates it out of the zone. Final seconds tick off, 19 and counting. Moved ahead, Mullen. Sends cross ice for Murphy. Bounces over Histick. Plays it off the boards. Sent wide of the net. Johansson hammered hard by Francis. Six seconds remaining. Penguins with the extra attack. Caps clear it as the horn goes to end the hockey game. And a courageous effort by the Washington Capitals coach Jim Schottfeld. And the Caps steal game one here in Pittsburgh with a great effort, outstanding effort in goal tonight from Don Beaupre and a great offensive and defensive effort in front of them. And the Caps have taken a 1-0 series lead with a 5-3 victory here in Pittsburgh. We'll be back, our post-game show ahead on Paramount 20, Caps win, game one. <laughs> In the NHL, it seems that any team can grab any team, whichever team wants most. I mean, you had the Edmonton Oilers and the Pittsburgh Penguins with all that uh, talent and stuff, but still, if you've got a team that's going to get on that roll, get on it with some momentum going to the playoffs, they, they can go a long way and maybe surprise some clubs like that. Scores! Caps win in overtime! Randy Burridge with a hat trick goal deflected between the legs of Tom Barrasso. And just seconds into overtime, the Washington Capitals.